They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! What's up, everybody? My name is Ethan. This is Courtside TV. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And before we get into it, I do want to point you guys over one more time to that poll that's uh, linked in the description down below. I mentioned it in the video from the other day. I'm having a poll about, it's just quick 10 questions. Who do you think is better between two players? Going to be using some of those responses for uh, an upcoming video, hopefully this weekend, but, but maybe next week, depending on how quickly we can get responses there. But uh, please go take that. It would really help me out. And we can see those responses in a video upcoming soon. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's get into the topic for today and that is the Portland Trailblazers um, and they might be in some pretty big trouble right now because of the recent injury news we've had coming from this team. So the Blazers have had some really rough injury news over the past couple of days here uh, with Yusuf Nurkic having a broken wrist which means he's going to be out for at least I think they said six to eight weeks is his recovery timetable so you know two months maybe even more um that's that's really really tough losing your starting center as well as yusuf or sorry cj mccollum um who has a broken foot and he's going to be reevaluated in four weeks uh but there seems to be some pessimism on a four-week return considering that typically broken foot is a, is a longer recovery than that um that's just when they're going to reevaluate him so it's looking like it's going to be you know more than a month that mccollum is going to miss now so they're going to probably be missing uh probably two of their best three players i would argue um i don't i guess you could say that maybe robert covington is in there or, or carmelo anthony if you're from 2012 but um, those are probably two of their three best players right now. CJ McCollum has been having an awesome start to the season. He's averaging like 27 points on crazy efficiency, taking a ton of threes and, and hitting like 45% of them. It's been pretty ridiculous. Um, his start to the season so far, and it was looking like he was probably going to make the all-star team, finally get that monkey off his back, right? He's guy. He's a guy who has like been right on the cusp of that all-star game for pretty much his whole career, the, at least the last like four or five years, um, and has never quite gotten there. And he was definitely playing at an all-star level to this point. Um, but, you know, who knows? He probably won't get in there because it looks like he's going to miss at least up until that all-star game. Um, I guess there's not going to be a game this year, but, but until the break when they make those all-star selections. So um, this is tough, tough for for CJ, tough for the Blazers. Um, missing those guys is going to really, really test them, um, and it's going to test their depth, especially in this loaded Western Conference. The conference doesn't slow down. Like, you got to keep up quickly in this conference here. There's been teams who have started slowly that are now starting to kind of get their mojo going, um, specifically the Nuggets, the Mavericks, and the Warriors. All of those teams were kind of like, okay, we started a little bit slow, but now those three are all kind of rolling here. Um, and Portland, while their record right now is 8-6, and six, it's okay. Uh, they just had two games against the Grizzlies postponed because of contact tracing within the Grizzlies organization. Um, but they, they're going to have to try to survive off of Damian Lillard for the next month or so. Um, you know, a little more than a month, and and that's really going to test whether or not this team can get into the playoffs because it's very very similar to last year, right? Where they um, had a couple of injuries, like Nurkic missed most of the season, a lot of a couple of their other role players missed some time, and it was a lot of Damian Lillard show, and they ended up being just quite good enough to sneak in. They had a strong bubble run and were able to get in that play-in game and, and sneak into the eighth seed um, when the roster would tell you that they're probably better than that considering that they were the three seed the year before and were in the conference finals um, and you know they had a really, really good season and then they didn't really change much about the roster but due to injuries and just not playing as well, I guess, they ended up at that eighth seed barely sneaking into the playoffs. And this year it's looking like it might be sort of a repeat of that um, considering the injuries they now have to sustain it's probably even worse than last year and I think the conference has gotten better around them so I find myself right now having some serious doubts about whether or not the Blazers can kind of replicate last season and use some of that magic to sneak into the playoffs again. So over here you will see the Blazers schedule. This is everything that the NBA has scheduled out because remember this year they're doing the schedules in halves sort of. So this is what they have uh, right now as far as we know they're going to play. Game scheduled through March 4th. Um, and you can look at that and say, okay, well Nurkic is going to be out for all these games and more. That this is, you know, that's more than six to eight weeks away. Um, Nurkic is going to be, you know, going to be out for about two months probably with this injury, with this wrist thing. Um, even on the optimistic side, a month and a half puts us right about at March fourth. Um, so it's looking like he's probably going to miss pretty much all of these games. Um, 
And McCollum, even the most optimistic, like let's say that, you know, he gets reevaluated in four weeks and he's able to come back. That's like the most optimistic you can be about it, right? That puts you, that's four weeks is about a month. So that puts you at, uh, at about the 22nd, um, which is, let's see here, the Phoenix game. So maybe he can come back for those last like five or six um, on this schedule, hopefully, right? Like I said, it's usually a longer injury with that foot thing. I doubt that he'll be able to make it back. Uh, but even if he does, you know, that's, that's a that's a tough stretch of games right there. Phoenix, Denver, Los Angeles, um, Charlotte's probably winnable. Um, and then Golden State, Sacramento, you know, who knows, right? Like those are those are long down the line. Um, but they do have a couple of winnable games here coming up soon in the near future. Um, Knicks, Thunder, Rockets, Bulls, those four are all definitely winnable for the Blazers. Um, we'll have to see how they adjust now with, with Damian Lillard because like I said, this depth here is going to be tested heavily um, over this next month or so. It's going to be Demi Lillard and then hopefully Robert Covington can start making some shots. Um, I think they'll you probably use Carmelo Anthony a lot more offensively, allow him to create a little bit, go back to his former days because we know that Carmelo was capable um, when he was in his prime and he still has all of those offensive skills. Probably not going to be as efficient anymore, but I think they'll lean on Melo a lot during this. Um, hopefully Gary Trent can get hot, start making some shots. Um, and beyond that, you're, you're hoping for some development out of some of these younger guys um like maybe uh, i don't believe zach collins is healthy right now but if he is maybe that's something um, or if he can come back at any point right zach collins can maybe play a little bit you're looking at nazir little or, or um anthony simons or, or any of these guys here on the roster that can hopefully step up and make a bigger impact uh, because they have a couple of these young players with potential that haven't really gotten to have a chance uh a ton behind damon cj right some of these guys have have been getting rotational minutes this year uh, but not huge chances to you know handle the ball and take a lot of shots with CJ out um, they're gonna have to you know find somebody to take all of his shots and so you know a lot of those will probably go back to Damian Lillard but they're gonna have to find some guys in order to, to create some offense here um, and also you're missing Nurkic so you're gonna have Enos Cantor in there at center um, we know about his struggles defensively his his defensive limitations um, you can put it that way where he is probably the worst defensive center in the league um, people just go right by him um, he's good offensively but but if you're going against you know any competent center in the NBA, they can find a way to probably exploit Cantor and score inside. So that's going to be something they're also going to have to figure out. Maybe they can find a center on the trade market um, or, you know, in in free agency. Dwayne Dedman, I know, is still available. Uh, looks like the Cavs are shopping around JaVale McGee. So maybe you can get into a bidding war with the Brooklyn Nets to try to acquire JaVale. Um, there's a couple options out there, but I could definitely see them looking for a center to maybe you know ease some of those minutes from away from Enos Cantor, especially uh, because Zach Collins I don't believe is healthy currently. Um, so yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how they deal with this um, because this is a long stretch of schedule here that they're gonna be without two of their three best guys, um, and I could definitely see them slipping. And I mean, just look at the standings here. I mentioned that this conference is very competitive, but I think it's honestly, you can't say this enough, that the Western Conference is going to be very, very tough this year. These teams can are all capable of beating each other on any given night. Um, you see at the top here, you got the Lakers, the Jazz, and the Clippers. Um, I could say that the Suns um, are probably playoff locks at this point with the way that they've been playing. I mean, who knows? Things can always change. But um, you have some of these teams at the bottom of the conference starting to play better. I mentioned them earlier. Mavericks, Nuggets, Warriors, I think are all playing themselves into playoff positioning. Um, you have, you know, teams like the Spurs who have been better than expected, the Grizzlies who have looked really good. Um, you know, even without some of their better players, they look tough. Um, the Pelicans, you would expect to maybe turn their record around a little bit as we go on here. Um, even the Rockets are competent. The Kings are competent. Um, the Thunder, I think I already said them. There's, there's lots of really, really good teams in the Western Conference. Um, so, I mean, it, it's just tough for me to see the Blazers being able to weather the storm here because if they can't win very many games over the next month or so i know damian lillard is really good but but without those two guys it's just it just doesn't look good on paper um and in practice they haven't been very successful without those guys in the past um so like it, i mean I think they're going to slip here. There's just too many teams in this conference that are looking to make the playoffs. 
um, and I think the Blazers might be falling out of the postseason here unless they can get some Damian Lillard, Ma Lillard magic um, and start to, to make a push even with some of their guys out. So anyway, I think that's about all I have on the Portland Trailblazers tonight. Like I said, at the top of the video, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, leave a like, ring the bell if you want to. Leave a comment letting me know what you think about the Blazers. Um, and uh, check out that poll in my description down below. You'll see it there. Um, just takes a minute, and it's really easy to do. Um, but yeah, the, the Blazers, man, w without those, those guys on their roster here... Um, I'm a little bit concerned about their ability to, to win some basketball games over the next month or so. Um, but yeah, with all that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.